think that it's it, it comes a, a number of different layers, but I mean, the visceral closing your eyes, imagining an, an audience watching moments of your film, that really helps me. Like imagining that the, you know, you have moments that feel like, it, like somebody should make this. This should be a cinematic moment. This should be an event that people will remember, in terms of like how you feel in that dark room when you're when you're watching it. Um, I think. Uh, I think trying to visualize the whole thing as a finished piece is very, I think it comes and goes as you're working on something. Do you know what I mean? Like I think you are, you're always sort of passionately sort of bouncing from, you know, plot theme to, you know, dialogue and all these things are kind of happening. And at any given moment, usually it's like, for me, it's like I can encapsulate moments and it's like visually I'll get excited about Oh, what if we? You know, the guy. I can, I can, I can see the set. I can see the world. I can smell it. Like, it, and and the other thing that sort of happens is that weird kind of, you know, the Oprah secret thing, where if you put it out there, you start to see it everywhere. So, like, when you start to imagine moments of your movie, you start to see it in the world, especially if it's something that's coming from an honest place. You know, um, like you you start to see characters that that that, that resonate in sets and lighting and all of that stuff starts to bounce. And you, or you're reading National Geographic, something will pop up. It's like, wow, that's just what we're talking about. You know, it's funny how that's to find you when you're when you're you're not even really looking for it you're just opening yourself up to it because that's sort of where your imagination is and then you start to resonate with the universe I think you know I know it sounds artsy fartsy but it it totally it, it, I, I time and time again it's like you're working on something and you're you're banging into a, a moment of your film and all of a sudden the the world starts to start you know show you examples and starts to you know whether it's a book you're reading or you know, something on the news or what have you, you start to, you start to bounce with it and you start to see how it, it has a very contemporary um, thread that, 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 you know, just fuels your imagination and gets you going. Uh, you know, I, I live with a sketchbook and I bring my sketchbook everywhere and I'm always writing down stuff and I'm always drawing and I'm always sketching. So in terms of like the visual, my visual platform, um, even if we're in a fantastic world, it really comes out of the like out of here, you know, I mean, very little of it happens in a, in a quiet, empty space. Like, uh, you know, there's something about going to sit in, in a coffee shop or going to a bar or just like getting out of the world where you start to see stuff. That's, that's, that to me is where the visuals bounce. On the management side, dealing with the politics of running a film was new to me. And early on in the, in the process, I would lose my temper quite a bit and I would get really passionate. And I, as, the passion that you bring to the table when you're an artist is not always helpful when you're trying to win arguments. And I think that was, that was a hard lesson. And I think that's something that towards the end of the process, uh, we got a little bit better at. But had we have been, I think, consistently over the three years, better at sort of advocating for, I think, the things that were really important in the film, I think we would have made a better movie. Because, because, on and and I feel that way about pretty much every film I've ever worked on. Like you see the what it, what it was could and should have. But certainly from the perspective of not not being the guy solving it with paper, but being the guy trying to solve it with words and debate and in the room of, you know, let's face it, everybody's going to be having opinions when you start to hit that certain budget point. You have to win those arguments. That's your job to protect your film. And so I think, I, for me, that was probably the biggest curve. Um, and so where I am now, I feel like I'm more patient. I feel like, I've, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to be a calmer person. I'm trying to not overreact immediately when something doesn't go the right way. Like, I, you know, it's always hard to sort of take the long form view on things. But sometimes, you know, the knee jerk reaction to charge into it is not going to help you. Maybe the best thing to do is step back and sort of really assess the situation, sort of empathize, what, did the, what does that person want? Why are they challenging you on this? And sort of how do I get out of the room without saying yes or no to something that I'm not sure, I'm not even sure, you know, what's right and what's wrong. That was one thing that, you know, Chris and Phil, the guys who uh, kind of exec produced it, and they're, they're, they, they, they gave advice towards the end. It's like, don't, don't, don't get into a yes or no situation in that room because you're too emotional, you know. Get out of the room and then and then fix your movie. And I think that was really good advice. And I think that, you know, going forward in my life, it's something I try to use a lot. And I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's calculated in in a negative way either. I think it's it is trying to be, you know, fair to you know yourself and everybody. You're not just knee jerking. You're trying to be calm. Um, and I think you know there are times when you're working with artists where you can be quick, and those decisions are based upon you know your gut reaction. 
But when you're dealing with the bigger Machiavellian, you know, aspects of, uh, of the politics, a hundred million dollar movie, you know, that, I think that was, that's probably my, my biggest curve that I'm trying to complete right now in my life. You know, The View is really unique in that you, you have intimate conversations with a lot of people working in the same line of work, but everybody's coming from very different places. So, you know, last night I was having dinner with people who were from live action, you know, Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and, you know, the guy who invented RBG and uh, Alpha Channel. I mean, like, that, it's just incredible. And, um, you know, I think, I think there's an intimacy to The View, which I love. Uh, you know, sometimes... And I love Ottawa, and I love, you know, Sigraph, and I love Annecy, but they're very big shows. Like, this feels very quiet. You go to breakfast, and you, you sit with people, and you talk. And uh, I think that's really, really unique about this, this thing that Maria Elena has created. So it's pretty awesome.